What's going on, everybody? John Stamper here with Dental Cast Productions. We are live at the CSDA's annual meeting, and we're kind of wrapping up on day three. And as you know, we've been speaking with a lot of the companies and speakers and all of that. They've got a little uh, reception getting ready to go on here. On so, but as as we're wrapping the day, um, there are a lot of things that are involved with these meetings. Uh, ancillary organizations, really wonderful things that go on that are a part of the associations. And so we wanted to take a little time to highlight some, some good will that is really going on. And I'm very excited to have Dr. Lawrence Levy with us, the Connecticut Mission of Murray Free Dental Clinic, uh, Mission of Mercy Free Dental Clinic. Uh, and Dr. Levy, thanks for coming on. Thank you, John, and thank you for having me. Um, the Mission of Mercy Free Dental Clinic is obviously what it sounds. It's a free dental clinic that has been put together for the last 12 years. Uh, over 12 years we have done this project 13 times. One year we did it twice. And in that time we have uh, treated 20,245 patients for free. Wow. And in that total it totals out to over $13 million of free care. The project is put together basically for the uninsured and the underinsured. We don't care who comes, uh, it's on a need basis. People will come, line up the day before the project starts, wait in line overnight just so they could receive the care. And it's obviously because for whatever reason they don't have the proper, they can't afford it, right. or for whatever reason they just come to see us. Sure. So talk a little bit about you know, I mean, how, how this all came about, and certainly I think a lot of the people that are a part of it that make it happen. So there are a number of people that really care that are part of the Connecticut State Dental Association. Um, I believe it was around 2005, 2006, uh, a doctor named Robert Schreibman went, he was president of the uh, Connecticut Dental Association. He went to an American Dental Association meeting and learned about this project. This project started in Virginia. So back in Virginia, I believe in the early 2000s, uh, there was a dentist named Terry Dickinson, and oh, yeah. he was approached by the Virginia legislature, what can we do for these people in some of the parts of Virginia which are really inaccessible for care? Sure. In Connecticut, we don't really have an access problem. I believe it's more of a utilization problem and a financial problem. But truly, in Virginia, it was, an it was an access problem. There just weren't dentists out in some of these remote locations. Right. So what they did was they put together these mobile dental clinics. Um, and over the years, you know, they fundraised. There was an organization formed called the America's Dental Care Foundation. Mm -hmm. And they, they're based out of Kansas, Nebraska. And they fundraised enough money to get a tractor trailer full of a hundred chair, a 100 chair dental clinic, which is completely mobile and completely portable, self-contained. The chairs are there, the instruments are there. All you need is the infrastructure to put it together, and that's what we do. Yeah. So when Bob was president, he came back and he put together a team of people. Uh, Mike Pearl is one. Um, uh, Ernie Spira. I'm probably going to forget, and I apologize, but there are a number of people that really, really cared. And Bob is one of these guys who. You know, he'll find a way to get you involved. Sure. You know, he's just a very good, I wouldn't want to say recruiter because this is the project that doesn't really need recruitment. If you care, you just jump on board. Right. But he basically put together a whole team of people and they started this project. So the first project was, I believe, in 2007 and it was at Tolland High School. Uh, it was a 2 day project. We treated maybe six or 800 people uh, for free. There were a number of people that volunteered and since then it has grown. So every year we have done this now for the last 12 years, like I say, one year we did two projects. The last two projects we did were smaller projects. So over the years we've been able to fundraise. When I say we, it's the Connecticut Foundation for Dental Outreach. That is our 501c3. Gotcha. And a number of foundations have given us money. The state of Connecticut actually gave us $188,000 one year earmarked to, to, to buy equipment. Right. And with that equipment, or with that money, we have bought equipment. So we have amassed 50 chairs on our own. So the America's Dental Care Foundation has the 100 chair truck. I believe there's two or three of those trucks right now that crisscross the United States. And there, at one point, there were 26 states that ran this project, mm -hmm. you know, and we're all fighting for the same equipment. Right. So sometimes we can get it, sometimes we can't. We almost have to plan our project a year or two years in advance, advance yeah. or else we can't do it. 
if we're going to do the 100 chair clinic, we need a, uh, a, we need a location that's literally 60 to 75,000 square feet. Wow. It's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. We've done it in the Excel Center. We've done it in Bridgeport Arena. You know, when we can't find that type of spot, right. which is, you know, it's hard to get it, and we have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these projects cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to run. Sure. So we do our best to beg, borrow, and, beg, borrow, and steal to fund these projects, mm -hmm. but it's just the way it works out. There are a lot of areas that we feel are underserved. Mm -hmm. So last year we were in Torrington. We were at Torrington High School, mm -hmm. and we ran a smaller project. I believe it was 40, 45 chairs. Before we opened the doors, we were already at capacity the first day. Wow. And just as we opened the doors, we were at capacity the second day. So it just tells you, yeah, the, you know, there. right. Yeah. When we do these larger clinics, we're in a bigger facility. When we do the smaller ones, you know, so last year we were in Tolland. Mm -hmm. This year we just wrapped up a project in uh, Willimantic. We were right. at Wyndham Middle School. I know that some of the people here might have already seen it on the news. And at that project, we treated uh, 626 patients. <laughs> The way it worked out, it was Palm Sunday weekend. Right. It rained Palm Sunday weekend. Mm -hmm. We had our first patient, we, did the we ran the clinic, we set up the clinic Friday. The kids were still in school. Mm -hmm. They let us use their gyms. There right. was two gyms, a larger and a smaller. So Friday night, we set up the clinic. Saturday and Sunday, we ran the clinic. Friday at one o'clock, our first patient was already waiting in line. Wow. At nine o'clock, it started raining. Torrential, torrential mm -hmm. rain. Mm -hmm. Those patients, I got there at five in the morning. We were opening the doors at eight. At five in the morning, there were already 80 to 90 people in line waiting to get, wow. you know, to get care. Yeah. And, uh, and during these clinics, it's basically full service. Yeah. You can get your teeth cleaned. If you know you have a cavity, you can get your teeth fulled. Yeah. Yep. We really, we're really put this together as more of a mass unit. And when mm -hmm. I say a mass unit, it's not meant to be regular care. It's strictly emergency care. Right. The people that we're treating are people that would wind up in somebody's dental office and really couldn't afford to pay, mm -hmm. or they would wind up in the emergency room. Right. There's data logged after we've visited an area, the emergency room visits for dental care or the necessity for dental mm -hmm. care literally drops off for a period of six to nine months afterwards. Yeah. So that's how the state, they understand that. And they, everybody's trying to help us. Yeah. There's a lot of foundations that give us money. There are a number of insurance companies that gives us money. There are a lot of dentists that personally donate themselves. And what we also do is we fundraise. So we have a fundraiser going on right now. Um, these are uh, reusable grocery bags. Mm -hmm. So we're selling them for $5 a piece. You know, So if anybody's still here and they want a grocery bag, if yeah. you go over to the Mission of Mercy booth, which is over in the corner, okay. uh, they're $5. I personally bought 15 of them. Mm -hmm. I gave them to everybody I know awesome. as a, uh, you know, how can you beat it? Right. I mean, how can exactly. you beat it? So for yeah. me, I believe in the project and I love the project. No, I, I love that. And again, um, just to let everybody know, like if you still are here and you're watching on Facebook, I see it over in the corner. Is that correct? Yeah, we're yeah. over uh, on the side. On the yep. side or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So again, um, I think what's amazing about a lot of these things, there's a lot of work that goes into it, like you mentioned. But I'm curious, you know, that day this year, those 600 patients looks on their faces, I'm sure. I yeah. mean, it brings just yeah. such a, a, an yeah. amount of joy yeah. to people to be involved in stuff like that. For the, you talking about for the patients or for the volunteers? For the, well, um, both, right. but I just well, mean from like, you know, as sure. the volunteers, what yeah. you see on well, the patients. From, from the volunteers' perspective, it's the, same, it's the same volunteers basically every year. You know, some come this year, some don't. We've had people that have volunteered and never missed a day. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's so rewarding and so gratifying because if you think about a patient, they've waited out all night in the rain, they're hungry, they're tired, mm -hmm. we try to feed them. You right. know, if, if somebody has been out and hasn't eaten, they're not ready to have care. We need to yeah. make sure that they're hydrated, we need to make sure that they're fed. Yeah. You know, they're going through a full medical screening before we even treat them. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You know, so as soon as the patient comes in, they're registered. Mm -hmm. We don't ask for any insurance information, we just need to know that they're in the clinic. Mm -hmm. And we don't let people wander all over, so a lot of our volunteers are just escorting patients mm -hmm. from one station to another. Mm -hmm. So when a patient comes in, first they're treated, uh, first they're registered, they're, they're screened medically to make sure they're healthy, mm -hmm. they're screened dentally to see what they need, and then they're sent to the appropriate area. Yeah. So if you're a patient who has had a toothache for six months, 
and not knowing where to go. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, depending on what's necessary, if we're doing a root canal on you or a filling or we're pulling the tooth, mm -hmm. you know, you've gotten this service, you had no place to go. For yourself, all of a sudden now, you're relief of your pain. Yeah. You, you're ecstatic. Yeah. So you've waited in line all night. It could be 24 hours later. You're wiped out. You're exhausted. You're tired. You're hungry. And you're getting this care. And you're giving hugs out. You know, you're, pe people walk out of there high-fiving everybody. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. you know. Yeah. And at the same time, we do for some patients at this particular clinic. Um, I was just going to wait a minute, but can you? Hear oh me? no! You're, as long all as you right. put the mic closer, okay, you're perfect. good. Yeah, yep. we'll hear so, you. Yeah. All right, perfect. So in this particular clinic, we we run a denture lab. So we'll make dentures for people just for their front teeth. Right. We we have to do it limited. You know, we're limited in scope. Sure. We actually set up a dental clinic, a dental laboratory within the facility ourselves, and we have. I believe there are four or five dental lab technicians that work in their own labs that have come to us to help make these dentures. Yeah. So if you have a patient who hasn't have a, doesn't have a front tooth, what, what are you feeling like? You can't smile. You know, you're embarrassed if you have to go for a job interview. Maybe, maybe you're embarrassed to go out. You know, if you're single, you don't want to ask somebody on a date. Right. You don't realize what your front teeth do for you. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're in pain, maybe you can't eat. Things aren't functioning well. There's a whole yeah. nutritional thing. So your diet goes from something that, think about all the healthy foods. They're hard. Your celeries, you know, your meats, your protein. So you can't eat it. So what do you do? You're eating pasta. You're eating bread. You're eating right. soft stuff, right. stuff that you can handle. So what we're doing is we're transitioning these people and they are so so appreciative yeah. you know and a number of the local legislators have come through That's and the awesome. media if, if you if some of these people that are here have seen it you know every year the media comes they're lining up waiting with us they're right. interviewing the patients this is such a feel-good project for everybody yeah. you know and you know, if you try to do this in your own office, it's very difficult. But, you know, in this situation, we have specialists that are root canal specialists, specialists that do oral surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, we have hygienists cleaning teeth. We actually get the students involved. Yeah. Oh, so UConn Dental School is part of this, and Perfect. a couple of the hygiene schools are part of this. Yeah. And also... Um, the dental assisting schools are part of this. So, so the dental, right, yeah. the dental assisting schools help with the yeah. sterilization of the instruments. Yep. The dental hygiene schools are there helping with, they don't, I don't think the students cleaning teeth, but they're assisting the um, hygienists. I might yeah. be wrong about that, sure. but I know they're involved. And then, but we do have dental students administering anesthesia to patients, and we have dental students pulling teeth with supervision from their proctors. Gotcha. They're not doing, uh, patient, they're not doing restorative, you know, fillings, mm -hmm. but they are doing some of these kids. Um, they're getting their practice on how to do extractions, yeah. and they're getting Mr. trained. Practice, yeah. Right. So there'll yeah. be one patient. There might be three or four students. So they're all watching mm -hmm. and learning. Yeah. So this has become a project that not only has become a service to the community, but it's also a teaching experience for a lot of these kids. Yeah. And it's such a, such a positive thing. And what we do is we have to keep track of things financially because of our fundraising. Sure. So I'm pretty sure that, um, I don't, well, then we just did the project, so I don't remember the exact numbers. But, you know, sometimes we run in the red, sometimes we run in the black. But we're going to keep doing this project as long as we have to. But the message that this project brings is there is a need for this project. There, are, there is care out there, and there are a number of patients that are slipping through the cracks. Right. And what we're trying to do is give them a temporary situation which will help them. We have become a dental home for probably, we get two to 300 repeat patients yeah, every sure, year sure. when we run this. Yeah. But what we're trying to do is send a message to the legislature, send a message to the dentist, send a message to the citizens of the state of Connecticut mm -hmm. that we hope someday there's some type of an agreement that everybody has some type of care. Right. You know, the way the Medicaid system works now, you know, a lot of docs don't even want to take it. You're getting paid 25 cents on the dollar. Right. Not that they don't want it. They'd rather do it for free than take the 25 sure. cents because they can't, they, right. you, you, you don't understand how much it costs right. to run your office. But in a situation like this, when we're setting it up, you know, they're out of their office, they're donating their time. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so gratifying and so satisfying so satisfying for everyone. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing the story. I, I, again, I think this is such a great way as we kind of wrap this meeting to highlight a lot of the great things that go on yeah. uh, in these associations. And how can people learn more? Let everybody know where they can find out more about it, how they can contribute, all that good stuff. Right. Thank you, John. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Um, so our organization is the Connecticut Foundation for Dental Outreach. We're not part of the CSDA per se, 
but we're supported by the CSDA. Gotcha. gotcha. So we have an email list that our volunteers know about. Um, if anybody is interested, it's CFDO, Connecticut Foundation for Dental Outreach dot org. That's our website. So all the information on the project you'll need, or all the information on the past projects is there. And I should mention to everybody that we do have our next project planned. It's going to be next March uh, 21st, 20 to 21st, 2020. It's going to be at Western Connecticut State University in Danbury on the West Side campus. And we're going to be in there. Um, they have an athletic center, a very large mm -hmm. athletic center. Mm -hmm. So that project, we will have the full large clinic, 100 plus chairs. Mm -hmm. And we're going to run the project during the college spring break. Unfortunately, when we do these projects, we have to do it when we can get the facility. Right. So our last project was during it was Palm Sunday weekend. Yeah. You know what? What a better way to spend Palm Sunday than providing care for yeah. somebody who needs it. Yep. So this particular project will be in March um, at Westcon. So uh, probably if it's March, probably December, January, our volunteer registration will open. But anybody can keep an eye if they go on our website. Anybody can keep an eye out um, on what's going on. Yeah. And if we have you in our database, you'll get an email on... Uh, if you volunteer pr previously, you'll get an email that the volunteer registration is open, and if you'd like to volunteer, you may. Excellent. And again, yep, if stop by the booth, yeah. if they're still there, five dollars for a bag, and uh, they're huge bags, seventeen by seventeen, and there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, they're pretty thick, <laughs> and you know, the state I think is looking to potentially put a tax on uh, bags when you go to the grocery store. Oh, there so you go. That's why we did it. What yeah, a better way than uh, getting a bag like this. Yeah. And uh, you should go get one yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe I'll leave you this one. Hey, I would love that. <laughs> well, Lawrence, thanks so much. Thank this you, has been John. Great. Always no, a pleasure I appreciate to, it. to learn you, more about what... Thank you for having uh, me. And, uh, you got it. Yeah, I'm glad it. we're... I don't know if you're ending the meeting with this podcast, but I'm um, I'm glad. I hope it's on a positive note. With absolutely. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time to come on and, and share the great work that's being done. Thank you very you much. You got it. Again. Yep. All right. Yep. Everybody's invited to, to this that's actually attending the Hinman tonight, but we are also going to be there. We're going to be live streaming. Our first interview of the evening. I'm very, very excited. We have Dr. Robert first Peskin, interview. the wow. first one. Wow. It's cool when you look around and you see you and your crew all over the place. And I think that that's one of the exciting things when you go to a show like this, watching what you guys are doing at this meeting has been really incredible. I mean, I love to be in awe of people. I'm in awe of what you and your team are doing. It's very cool. You see the, the upshot of, of video learning. It's it's everywhere. And it's, you know, people want to learn in 15, 20 minute modules. Right. I mean, video learning right. is, is gone insane yes. in terms of the potential that yes. you can do. To get it done for a number of reasons. I think there's an authenticity there because it's not being photoshopped. The uh, Hem and Dental Society is a private study club. Uh, we have 850 members and they all donate their time to put this meeting on. They are representing the ADA here with us today. All the new trends, all the changes, they're promoted here. We love this meeting. Um, you know, this is probably our biggest meeting every year. We're very excited because this year we are celebrating our 35th anniversary as an association. We are the Organization for Safety, Asepsis, and Prevention. So I spend most of my time working with dental students and young dentists with the goal of, you know, uh, engaging them and educating them and empowering them to have a better future for dentistry. We wanted to have a mouth prop that would um, have interchangeable accessories but not restrict access to the work area for dentists. My goal starting out with Cordy's was not just to have this one little product that's kind of clever and functional, um, but it's more to change the industry standard on how power scaling is done. Uh, RevuWell is a great patient engagement system. We do three things extremely well. We attract new patients to the practice, we retain the patients that they already have, and we help them get their treatment accepted. You want to listen to your customer, you want to make sure you're addressing all their needs, but you also want to get your product to market, and so you need that validation from the customer. Technology is changing everything. All of my friends that are dentists or hygienists that have actually created something, yeah. I get to see how technology has changed everything right. um, for the better. First of all, we're going to talk about what is ID security. I want you to be wise about your technology. I want you to be wise about the information that your patients have entrusted you with. We have weekly admin meetings. Typically it's the doctor and your office manager or practice administrator. Videos play a big part, right? Yeah. Videos are huge. 
Um, you've got to have a video strategy. You're an amazing example of this. Is videos are your best lead generators today in marketing. Period. I love what you guys are doing in this space because it's fast, it's quick, it's actionable, and you can get it out there to the audience very quickly.